What has the public's reaction been uh, ever since you dropped that op-ed? It's been a busy day for you. It has been a busy day. It's been positive. Uh, the op-ed is reaching a lot of people who uh, want to support the commanders coming home to Washington, D.C. I think people uh, who've been here for a really long time remember the Washington commanders winning ways, all the Super Bowls that we enjoyed, all the fun, uh, the players like Doug Williams, Joe Theismann, Daryl Green, Brian Mitchell, uh, and they want to get back to that. Uh, and then there are others who see the tremendous economic development opportunity that exists uh, if the District of Columbia can get control of the land uh, and have a broad vision that includes a world-class stadium, uh, housing uh, for people with different backgrounds and incomes, as well as retail and amenities that supports our world-class tourism and hospitality industry. There's just so much opportunity that awaits. As a native Washingtonian, the possibility of seeing that area redeveloped more so than it was with RFK back in the day, I mean, does it excite you? I know we're far away, away from that, possibly. But does that excite you, that opportunity or possibility? I can't help but be excited about the opportunity. Uh, you've got a new name, you've got new ownership, uh, and now you have new opportunity that exists uh, once the NFL approves uh, the sell of the team, we can really have that thoughtful conversation about what the future holds for the commanders in the District of Columbia. We can have that conversation uh, with the members of Congress so that uh, we can get the land here in the District of Columbia uh, and decide how all that potential can accrue to the benefit of the people of the District of Columbia. We're talking about jobs, economic opportunity, world-class football, but also more than simply eight home games a year. We're talking about you know, entertainment, sports. Uh, we're talking about a world of opportunity in the District of Columbia. And, and the op-ed really is framing that conversation that I hope happens really soon thereafter. Now, obviously, I mean, this is a different situation compared to, let's say, Minneapolis or Arlington. You do have to get control of that land. Are you concerned about um, federal or congressional pushback uh, to any attempts to do so? Well, uh, the one thing I think uh, that people can agree on across uh, you know, party lines or background is they love great football. And I think it's an opportunity to get back to the commander's winning ways. Uh, fans have suffered <laughs> two decades uh, you know, watching the previous owner uh, and the experiences have not been pleasant. Uh, we want to dispense with all those horrible memories, all the just horrible allegations associated with uh, the team uh, and that owner mm -hmm. and thinking about how we can hit the refresh button uh, and start anew. Uh, it does mean that we've got to uh, get past that first hurdle uh, and acquiring the land or having the lease be modified that allows for a broader economic development vision. Uh, but I'm optimistic about that. And frankly, all the feedback that I've been getting uh, has been positive about the potential to be able to do that. I don't know if you saw the reporting yesterday about Virginia and the Harris Group being interested in possibly getting $1.5 billion in public funding out of Virginia. I've got two questions for you about that. First, when it comes to public funding, would you accept public funding uh, going into a new stadium in RFK? And is there a ceiling to that? Yeah. I think a conversation about welcoming the commanders home and having a new stadium shouldn't start with whether the District of Columbia is going to put up any funding. Uh, we have some really great lessons that we've learned from National Stadium and Audi Field. Uh, and if you look in and around those areas, uh, it has tr developed tremendous tax revenue uh, for the District of Columbia that supports uh, those social safety net programs that everybody can agree uh, people need here in the District of Columbia. And so uh, I think uh, the question about funding the stadium is something that you have once you've acquired the land from uh, Congress and, and really engage the community that would be impacted. Uh, we're not going to leave anybody behind in this conversation. Uh, we're going to talk about the opportunities that exist for everybody in the District of Columbia. We're going to address any concerns that neighbors have. We're going to address concerns around small business contracting opportunities. Uh, we certainly should talk about uh, what the infrastructure looks like in order to make this happen. Two or three more questions. You got to one of them, but before I get to that, uh, off that Harris reporting, um, it was specifically about Virginia. Are you concerned at all, and I don't know if you've talked to them at all, that Virginia has a has a, a foot forward in this race if they're talking about Virginia? Or 
do you think DC is can be just as competitive? I think the District of Columbia is certainly competitive when it comes uh, to where the football team should locate. Uh, after all, it's the Washington Commanders, and that's Washington, D.C. We've got uh, a great site where uh, we've got a lot of fond memories of the Commanders winning ways. And I think any conversation about relocating the team to begin and hopefully end uh, with Washington, D.C. And uh, that one last question, you brought up neighbors. I know Councilman Rollins opposed this in the past when that was his ward. Some neighbors in, in Hill East have, have said the same thing. How do you make that work with people who are concerned about noise and traffic? Because um, that's going to be there regardless. I mean, how, how, do you, how do you make that work? Uh, I think you have the conversation. You have hearings. You invite people in uh, and talk about what the potential is. Uh, I know there are neighbors who have concerns, rightfully so. Uh, what they need to understand that uh, their concerns are going to be top of mind for me and I'm sure my colleagues at the council. Nobody's going to be left behind. Uh, we want residents to understand uh, the role that they can play in this tremendous once-in-a-generation opportunity to bring the commanders home. And there might be people who have differences of opinion. Uh, we should expect that. Uh, but it shouldn't keep us from having a thoughtful conversation about what the future holds for the commanders in the District of Columbia. Uh, it is an appropriate conversation to have. I get excited thinking about it, and I'm sure that excitement is going to catch on throughout the District of Columbia.